I bought an Oshia, I hope that's how it's pronounced, tram kit based on a, um, a 1925 London tram. Um, uses a passenger transit vehicle and using electrical power at that time. In 2019, I scratch built, uh, using various photographs from books, a Wilkinson type tram locomotive. For a short period in the early 1880s and up to about 1905-ish, attempts were made by some local boroughs to substitute steam-powered traction to replace horses. I believe that up to about 1880, tram cars in Britain were pulled by horses. In 1878, Britain had about 270 miles of tramway and about 1,000 cars and 9,000 horses to pull them. Using the O'Shea kit, I'm going to try and reproduce a, a sort of representation of a tram car that might have been pulled by a steam traction, such as my freelance Wilkinson tram. By 1905 or thereabouts, however, electric traction had by and large seen off uh, steam hauled road trams. The kit is basically a wooden one, wooden construction, and is very well presented and packaged. I particularly like the plastic tray that's included containing all the otherwise very readily lost uh, metal parts, etc., and the small bits and pieces, rather than these um, sort of self sealed plastic bags that one typically gets. That's a really good thing. These are the four wheels as supplied in this tram kit. They're okay, nothing wrong with them really, but they're very, uh, very slim and really, in my view, not fit for my garden railway. And as per the instructions, they simply, uh, I think, are glued to a bit of wooden dowel as axles, is, the, is what the instructions say. And that's not much cop either for continuous running. So. I found a knob of uh, scrap of stainless, I think it is, and I'm turning up four, four wheels from that uh, for the tram, and uh, I'm going to fit bosses in the middle with a locking grub screw so that um, this thing can be regauged 3245mm, that's my plan, and I'll have to make some sort of uh, subframe chassis to attach this lot, ultimately. This video clip is speeded up five times and just shows me turning the tread on the, uh, on the last of the wheels, the fourth wheel, with a three degree taper as per the rest. You may notice that rather than rely on my failing mental arithmetic when I'm making parts, I have a tendency to check multiple times where I am with the, uh, the dimensions when I'm turning, etc. To make this tram more suitable for the outside garden railway, I've made up two new axles and two wheel sets uh, suitable for 45mm or 32mm gauge um, and they are regageable in set screws. I've drilled through the 
dummy spring supports that came with the kit uh, and drilled those through uh, an eighth of an inch but also fitted these are brass reinforcing plates so the axles would also run on a combination of, of brass bearing and these original metal spring supports I don't know what metal the original castings are in this kit but it's, a t it's um, much harder and seems much tougher when I was drilling it than the normal white metal that one gets so I'm hoping it will be quite suitable as a bearing material reinforced with the brass keepers To make the tram more suitable for towing in an outside situation I've also fitted glued brass reinforcing strips from the bottom of the tram along and round the uh, supplied bumper woodwork. These bumpers are quite flimsy really, clearly this model as designed is not intended to be working. So uh, that's why I've reinforced all this and the draw pin will now come through the, the brass strap that I've made for each end. You can't quite see this one because I've slapped some paint on it temporarily and it's rubbing down but uh, there's one at this end, I've started to paint this end. But all this in an attempt to make the tram suitable for outside use in a live steam situation. A slightly tricky job of assembling the semi-spiral staircases at each end of the tram. This tram kit comes with a couple of pieces of wood which in theory are to be bent to form these end sections. It hasn't been possible to do that. The re they tell you to soak this wood but the reason it doesn't work is that the grain of the ply runs this way and so there's tremendous resistance to bending and even when you do the thing just wants I mean this one was soaked overnight and it just wants to straighten itself out if you needed to bend this wood this plywood should have been laminated so the grain ran that way both sides and you stood hard for chance to cut a long story short I've given up on the plywood ends and I've actually made um, cut out two bits of brass to do the end plates with one end's done and I'm about to install the other end just a bit of thin 24 gauge um, brass which of course is quite amenable to bending and staying where it's put and I shall shortly affix this end the brass round beading that came with the kit has been soft soldered to the brass balcony ends that are fitted to this carriage rather than uh, gluing as the instructions originally suggest and I couldn't quite see that uh, having a happy ending By the as supplied instructions, this, uh, these panels along here were supposedly to be made out of uh, supplied wood bent at the ends to form the shape and to meet in the middle. I could not see any way 
of achieving that. Same problem as I had this end. I don't think it's really possible with this thickness of ply to bend it and not have enough residual stress in it that it could keep straightening out. So as you can see, I've actually changed matters and made the uh, surround of the top deck in brass. A few pictures showing the finished article. The small figures that I've added to the tram were not included in the kit and came out of my box of miscellaneous bits and pieces that I keep and frankly I've got no idea where I acquired those figures. I think it's worthwhile mentioning one or two omissions I made to the basic tram model to convert it to an earlier towed version. I didn't install the driver stations at each end as per the original model with the rear stack type speed controllers because the model I've made is not supposed to be electric and I also did not install the column and the electrical pickup apparatus again because this is a, a, a non-powered supposed to be a non-powered version of the tram I did not install these columns with these lights on the upper deck because I could find no reference to such by the photographs I had of the uh, of the very early trams nor have I installed the Nesta lights at each end because again, I could find no reference to that on the earlier towed versions. I also didn't install the large running board notice on the upper deck because I couldn't find any photographs where such was displayed. This model version also has uh, kind of mesh arrangement fence around the upper deck I couldn't find any reference to that only in the photographs I had of the very early towed trams so I haven't uh, I haven't installed this mesh a close-up view of the rear stack type electrical controllers as per Osea's original version but I have not installed these on my non-powered version.